Welcome back. For our first topic in the series, let's discuss about tables. Let's look at why we typically create tables in an application and what are some easy tweaks to make them look better. I'm here in Figma where I've prototyped a couple of variants of a table. For this particular example, the context I've used is a conference website where we are currently viewing a page that has a table listing down the speakers. And it is important to note we are viewing the page as an admin. What we have here is typically how we develop a table to support CRUD operations. We usually begin by mapping each column in the database table into a column in the UI. The header contains the field name and the rows contain the data. That leads to the first nine columns we see. First name, last name, status of whether the speaker has accepted or declined to speak at the conference, the company they work for, their designation within the company, the topic of their talk, type whether it is in person or remote, date and finally time. Apart from the data, we also have a few actions. First, to edit the row. Second, to email the speaker. And third, to delete the row. This is usually any standard table that a developer can put together given a database table. Let's now learn how to improve this UI with a few simple tips. My first tip would be to move away from mapping database table columns to UI columns. Instead, merge columns where appropriate, which will help with spacing issues as well. You can see here in the second version of the table, we have merged first name and last name column into speaker. We have also merged company and designation into profile. The company name is what users are more familiar with and takes precedence within the column. We also have date and time merged into a scheduled column with more emphasis on the date. This has resulted in a bit more space that we can distribute as padding on either side. From a styling point of view, I've also made sure the header stands out from the rows. A different background color and uppercase text usually is more than sufficient. Now what we have here is great but there are two more tips to easily elevate this to a cleaner design. The first one has to do with the actions column. Generally, when working with tables and you see a repetition of the same data, that is your cue to do something about it. In our case, the actions are the same for every single row. In such scenarios, what I would suggest is to remove it as the default content and instead show it when the user hovers over an individual row. You can see in this third variant, we don't see the same set of actions on every single row. Instead, when you hover, the actions are visible. This eliminates the clutter on the actions column. From a styling point of view, you can also remove the borders and use odd even row styling to distinguish each row. This already looks far more elegant than the previous table. If you've got a hover functionality like we do, it's also worth highlighting such a row which is quite easy to do with a different background color. The final tip I want to show is about the status columns in tables. You can improve the user experience of viewing a table by adding a badge of appropriate color for any status type column. Here in this version 4 of the table, you can see we have badges for accepted, pending and declined. This makes it easier to scan the status for a row and it's more user friendly. Apart from the status column, I've also made changes to the type, schedule and actions columns. Now this would require a good amount of discussion between the designer and the product owner but I would like to show what is possible in an ideal scenario. In our context of conference speakers, if we decide type and schedule are the only editable fields, you can have dropdowns to edit them in place. 
type is either remote or in person and schedule may contain 8 to 10 options maximum. This will allow us to remove the edit icon from the actions column. As for delete, we may not really need it as frontend is capable of filtering the rows with accepted status only for the end user to view. That will narrow down the actions column to just email where we send an email for the speaker to accept or decline the invitation. I maintain the same pattern to show send only on hover as the same button would repeat for every row. As you can see, with a few changes that can easily be done by a developer, we can go from a database table UI to one that has much better UI and UX. Hopefully, you're already thinking about changes that you can make in an application that you've been working on. That covers our first set of design tips for developers working with tables. Thank you for watching. Please do consider subscribing to the channel and I'll see you in the next one.